amigos, ¿cómo están? Una nueva edición aquí de Auto 060 en Cristina Radio Network. Tenemos un show en que vamos a presentarles la historia de un documental que se llama 32 Hours and 7 Minutes con su productora y directora general. Vamos a hablar también con uh, Simon Turner de Land Rover sobre la nueva Range Rover Sport 2014. Y vamos a cambiar un poco, no es necesariamente de autos, vamos a hablar de una motocicleta, la Can-Am Spider, y de un Sidu. Eh, esas motos de agua que son eh, una, una cuestión muy, muy, muy divertida y vamos a escuchar un poco de la relación que tiene esto y un poco con los autos. Así que si tiene motor y va rápido, lo pueden escuchar aquí en Auto 060. Así que sin perder tiempo, vamos de inmediato a la entrevista con uh, Corey Walls, eh, directora y productora de 32 Hours and 7 Minutes. So uh, a few days ago, a few weeks ago, I was in an event in California driving um, back to the airport. And uh, I get the, the huge luck of, of getting to know Corey. And I ask her, among other things, what, what are you doing and all that? And then, like, I ask her, what were you doing before this? And, like, if someone tells you, like, I did laundry or I washed my car or something, she says, I did a movie. <laughs> I mean, like, really? And then, like, we started talking about it. So, Corey, thank you for the opportunity to talking to you again. And uh, so let's talk about this uh little project that you've been working for about 10 years, right? Yeah, 10 years. Thank you for having me on your show. So tell us about it. 32 hours and 7 minutes. What does that mean? 32 hours and 7 minutes is the record from New York to L.A. in a car set in 1983 by my dad's best friend in the very uh, last race of what was known to be the Cannonball. Yeah. It was the last, uh, it was the successor race of the Cannonball called the U.S. Express. And it was the last sort of balls-to-the-wall underground car race. Okay. Let's go back a little bit to the history because when uh, you mentioned Cannonball to most people, they remember another movie that has to do a little bit with this one, but not really, right? Correct. So everyone knows uh, Burt Reynolds in uh, Cannonball Run, which was released in 1981. And what most people don't know was that that movie was based on the real event. The screenwriter Brock Yates was actually the um, mastermind behind the Cannonball race and he wrote about it um, in Car and Driver magazine in the 70s. Yeah, and uh, this race, that, that uh, the original one, uh, obviously it was illegal right? because <laughs> to make that time you have to speed a little bit. Just a little. Yeah, yeah the, the thing that I like to point out to people when they hear about it, because mo some people get a little upset. What? You were racing across, you know, people raced across the country really fast. That's dangerous. But um, Brock Yates started this event because his point was that it's not speed that kills, it's bad driving. And he said, look, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to race across this country as fast as I can, and you're not even going to know about it. Wow. And uh, so in, back, back in those days, how many cars, how many, how was the organization of that, 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 those original races? You had to be invited to the race, so he had to know that you and were keep someone. keep secret, I guess, yeah, before. Right? Yeah, he had to trust you. He had to trust your driving, that you were someone who could handle a car at speed. So these were guys who had a lot of seat time, women too. Um, you were invited to the race between, you know, a dozen to upwards of three dozen, four dozen cars uh, were invited every year, two drivers per car. And the original ran for how many years? Five. It five. went five times between 71 and 79. And apparently the relations to the other movie, the Bird Reynolds movie, is that He, Jates, got a contract, right, to do a, to do that movie or participate into the production of that, and then he had to stop doing it? Correct. So from what I've been told and what I've read is that in uh, 79, he did the very last Cannonball. Before that, he it was 75. And I think during between 75 and 79, he was getting a, this deal with Hollywood. Okay. To, he's a writer. He, you know, and all writers, maybe not all writers, but most writers would love to pen a screenplay and go to Hollywood. I think all of them, all of us do, but some, not <laughs> always, everybody's brave enough to talk. Right. So he was able to um, get this deal, and uh, the racers that had been involved in the race back then and knew him said, well, you know, Hollywood's not going to invest their money in you if there's a risk you know you need to stop doing the race because you can't what if something bad had happened in one of the races right so you've killed your idea for a movie but anyway he pent he wrote this screenplay and did his last 
Cannibal in 79. And, and I've read from his book and other accounts that a lot of the crazy stuff that went to the movie really happened in um, the 79 race. No, I mean, some some things didn't happen. It was completely... Some, some are exaggerated. <laughs> no, what you're trying to say? Yes, it's a very exaggerated uh, movie. It's kind of silly. It's fun. People have fond memories, great memories of watching that movie. So um. Yeah. And then, so what, what is uh, the idea for you to, to make this uh, new movie, like the, the real thing, uh, came from? Well, um, good question. It came from this memory I had as being a 10-year-old. And finding out that this man, who was my dad's best friend, um, kind of like an uncle to me, had set this a record in uh, this race. And when I found out that he had done this and my parents were happy about it and their friends were happy about it, it, it just blew sort of the lid off my concept at that point as a 10-year-old of what life was going to be. You know, you're taught to color in the lines and show up on time and, and do follow these rules and guidelines. And I realized at that point that he stepped outside the bounds. He did something that was not supposed to be a good thing. It was frowned upon because it was against the law, but yeah. he did something that was so amazing. And it was very inspiring to me as a 10 year old to just know that life had all these avenues and opportunities for you to take even though it might not be accepted in the norm but they were good things it wasn't that you were doing bad things you know yeah. it, was, it was very inspiring to me as a 10 year old to know that I mean, as a 10 year old i'm not surprised about that because i mean you're pretty alert 10 year old <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i guess <laughs> i think driving uh and being on the road was a big part of my my life just i spent a lot of time on the freeway as a, as a kid so So uh, then, like, the process of gathering all the information and meeting with, I guess, the people who are still alive from those uh, days, and uh, that's how it started? It was, uh, that was it took you, like, so long to, to produce this movie? Yeah, I mean, it took, me, um, it took me a good while to find people. I had a producer working with me at that point, and uh, we had to track everyone down, and I was literally going off num napkins from bars and the restaurants where the banquet was held for the very last race. People would write their name and their phone number on a, on a cocktail napkin and hand it to, the, to my dad's friend. And so he brought me a sack of photographs and business cards and pieces of paper from 1983, and that's all I had to go on. Wow, that's amazing. I already seen the movie. I'm not going to say much about it because I think people who are listening really have to watch this movie because it's, it's pretty amazing. And as you said... Some of, uh, of all of us writers want to, to write a movie, but I think all of us, all the automotive journalists and people who really like cars, want to do what you did in that movie. Not the movie, but like you are in the movie too, right? Yes. I, I tell you the story, and I uh, occupy a very important seat. <laughs> wow. So incredible. So the movie was released uh, earlier this year. Yep. Uh, but it's an independent movie, so it's not in, in big films, you know, film festivals or anything like that yet? No, not yet. It's uh, completely independent. Um, we had a list of a bunch of guys who've been following the progress of the movie for many years, and just before, before Christmas, I actually released it privately to them first because these are the hardcore car guys who've been waiting, and they just had sent me messages for years saying, like, hey, we're behind you. Just make it great, man. Make it great. And so I fe felt it they really needed the first crack at seeing it. Okay, so now you said it's not released in, in film festivals or movie theaters. Where can people find it? Oh, they can find it on my website, uh, 32hours7minutes.com. Yeah, and then they, they, what, what will they find there? They find the actual movie? They find a, a clip or what, what is it? Yeah, they'll, well, they'll find a clip of the first two and a half minutes of the film. They'll find the original trailer that we released. Um, And it'll take them to our, our shopping cart where they can buy the DVD. Right now, it is on DVD. I think the next step we will take is we're going to do streaming online. Yeah. Yeah, that's going on now with uh, YouTube and all those things. So it's a great opportunity to like uh, expose your movie to more people, I guess. So do you want to give up anything about the movie or not? <laughs> <laughs> give up? Well, uh, a little bit of the story, a little bit more about sure, more um, detail. Sure. So it's basically if I was going to cut the movie up into pieces the the first third of the movie is me taking you back into 1983 and uh giving you the, the the history just on the race and what people i think don't realize of what happened very soon after that there's some suspicions about a rec this record that was set about how it was not real and um 
well, we, I need to prove that this record was real because I believe with all my heart that my dad's friend Doug set this record in 83. And uh, the only way to do it is to uh, get in a car and see if you can match or beat that time. So the wow. second two thirds of the film is we get into a BMW M5 and race across the country to try to break the record. That's amazing. And uh, going back to the original record, what was the, the speed limit, the, the speed average that they had uh, to complete the, the, the original 32 and 7 minute record? We have footage of uh, them saying it at the finish, they said it was 89.897 miles per hour. So just, just under 90 miles an hour average for, the whole, for a day and a half. Yeah, when you think about that, that's like, I mean, if you do a little bit of the math, that's very, very fast. Because that includes, I guess, how many stops did they do uh, for gas? Oh, they, they did. And go to the bathroom, I, I believe guess. they did six. I think they did six gas stops and they got a ticket. Wow. They got a speeding ticket, yeah, yeah in Ohio. So, so, so that probably that makes uh, a lot of people believe that it wasn't possible. So yeah. anyway, I mean, the movie is about 32 hours and seven minutes, but here we only have like 10 minutes. <laughs> so thank you very much again for, uh, for the information. Congratulations on the movie. I've seen it. Twice already, I have to say. The second time was much better than the first one. <laughs> I enjoyed really a lot. So again, what the, the website, please? 32 hours, 7 minutes. The 32 and the 7 are numerical. 32 hours, 7 minutes.com. And thank you so much for having me. No, on thank this radio you, Tori. Well, listen, thank you. I mean, it's uh, the great thing about this job is traveling and meeting people like you. Well, likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Pues ahí tienen la, la directora Corey Wallace de la película 32 Hours and 7 Minutes. Se las recomiendo de verdad. Es, es fascinante a todo el mundo que le gustan los autos, la velocidad. Y seamos un poco honestos, romper los, los límites de velocidad. Yo creo que la van a disfrutar mucho. 32 Hours and 7 Minutes.com con Corey Wallace. Eh, cuando regresemos vamos a, a hablar de la, del test drive que hicimos con la Land Rover Range Rover Sport. Eh, ahí sí, respetando todos los límites de velocidad, estuvimos en el sur de San Francisco probando esta, esta nueva SUV de Land Rover así que no se vayan que cuando regresemos aquí en Auto 060 eh, la Land Rover Sport 2014 